What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a game called Quintera. This is kind of a weird one. You know, I've, I've, I'd like to think, I've been doing this for eight or nine years now. And like, I've been doing impressions videos for about four years. And I get sent probably about 20 to 30 games a week. Just from random interested parties that are like, hey, I have this indie game, it seems like a cool idea, let me know what your thoughts are. And so, like, I tend to churn through a lot of games, and they're sort of like this, not necessarily a malaise, because I love indie games and I love the industry, and it's not really being jaded either, but I don't really want to call it experience either. Like, it's really, really hard to put my finger on, but basically I've seen a lot of stuff. And so a lot of the time when somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, I got this idea for a game, it's super original, like, you play through it and you're like, okay, well, like, it's like this game and this game and this game. This is a weird game, dude. This is a weird game that's got a lot of influences going on into it. On a certain level, it's a little bit like Monster Train in regards to the fact that you pick, like, a faction that has different units that you can deploy in various spots to fight with enemy factions. On another level, it's a little bit like Magic the Gathering, except not. Like, you draft land tiles, and you need various lands to unlock your different units for play. I'll try to talk about how it works as we go on in, but then on another level, it's just very much kind of an RPG strategy game as well, where each of your units develops, you can add upgrades to them, you can modify them, they get stronger as the run goes along, as well as you're incorporating new units, you've got to manage your morale, you can't take too many losses, it's a weird game, and honestly, it's kind of hard to lock this one down. So let's start an expedition. We're going to play for about 25 to 30 minutes. If after watching this video, you end up really liking Quintera, I'll have a link for you down below in the description so you can check the game out for yourself. Aside from that, you'll also find a link to my Discord, my Twitter, and my Twitch stream, all three of which I would love to have you. So let's dive on in and check it on out. We gotta pick our army right now. Uh, the font is really, really small on this menu. So that's my first critique, is that like I have really bad eyesight, and I'm, I'm nearsighted, but even like two feet from the computer, I have to like lean forward to see these letters right here. I would bump this up a little bit and maybe have it auto-scroll, kind of Star Wars style, or just put a slider on the side so that you can read through. Uh, there's four different factions. I've had the pleasure of playing the Lycans and the Imps. I have not played the Crystallians yet, and I have not played the Ethereals yet. Uh, so we'll probably play one of the armies I'm familiar with because this is kind of like a complicated game and I don't think anybody's interested in watching me like struggle for the next 30 minutes to figure out what everything does and have to read every single tooltip. Thus far, I very much like the imps better than the lichens. The lichens are kind of frontline fighters and they're really, really good so you gotta watch their interactions with the way that their monsters work. This is a turn-based game on a hex grid and so like... The Lycans tend to get a lot of bonuses from adjacency, or deploying things next to specific things. They're not a mobile army, they're an army where you want to create a well-developed line, and you want the flanks of that line to have the support units on it to make the front guys even stronger, but like when the Lycans fold, they fold really, really hard if you just can't get them into position in time. The Imps are a ranged army, so they rely on having really only one unit that's a big badass tank, and then from there, Everybody else on their team is ranged in some respect or another. And, and so they're kind of an interesting faction in that they're very much skirmishers, I guess. Uh, they kind of eschew, I guess would be the right word for it. Uh, they kind of eschew frontline combat as much as possible, and they tend to dance around the enemy a lot while firing projectiles and, like, running for their lives, basically. Uh, but it works really, really well. I actually really enjoyed playing them because they have a very... They have a nondescript, I don't know if it's nondescript's the right word, I don't know, my vocabulary is failing me today, but anyways, they have a very non-committal play pattern, where you're free to move around, you're free to kind of, you don't need to maintain a line, you don't need to watch your defenses, you don't need to kind of, like, protect anything, uh, you just kind of move around as much as possible while harassing until the enemy eventually dies of exhaustion. The Crystallians and the Ethereals I haven't played yet. Uh, so I can't really go into what they do. Uh, the Ethereals, as far as I can tell, they use a resource called Soul Charges, uh, which allow them to use very, very powerful abilities. In the case of the Imps, a, their abilities don't have any cost. They just get to use their abilities, but they tend to be weak as a trade-off. My guess is that the Ethereals are probably a little bit stronger, and they can't use their abilities unless they have those charges, uh, because the abilities are stronger and the units wielding them are a little bit tougher. And then for the Crystallians, they said they focus on being spellcasters and gaining armor. So they sort of seem like they might be like the tanky faction, or the faction that's meant to withstand the tide, but we're gonna play the imps today, because I, I feel like that's the faction that I have the most experience with, that I know what I'm doing, and I can explain what's going on inside the game the most effectively. So let's dive straight on in. Our skyship dives from the sky, 
down to the earth below. So this game takes place in a fantasy world of floating islands. Basically what will happen is instead of using like an FTL or like a Slay the Spire type system where you're on a track, this game is also on a track, but imagine if in Slay the Spire, every time you moved up the track, there was a batch of things that you could resolve. And as long as you resolve like half of them, you can move on to the next batch, but you can resolve all of them if you want to. Uh, so it's kind of same, same, kind of little different, but like imagine if FTL or Slay the Spire had multiple encounters that you could choose from on each little pip that you move up the chain, and you can do all of them in sequence if you want to, or you can just do one and move on if they all seem to be too hard. It's up to you. Uh, right here we have a crystal cache, so we're going to pick this up. We got some equipment. We got a tiger's eye that will increase one unit's attack by one. Uh, we've got Cinnabar. This will increase a unit's HP by one and also give them Rage. Uh, it will give them Diopside, which increases their magic damage by one. I'm going to say go with the Tiger's Eye for right now. Over here, we've got a Quartz that gives HP. We've got Amatrine over here that gives you a Stealth whenever you kill somebody and plus one damage just all the time. Uh, we've got a Topaz over here. I'll probably take that one right there just because it's rare. We've got Lazurite, which gives you Taunt. Uh, which means that you must be attacked before they can attack anything else that's adjacent to them. Uh, we've got a Fire Opal, which increases your magic damage. We've got an Amethyst that increases your HP. I'll go ahead and take that. We can either go down or to the right, or we can go to this batch right here. Uh, because I can see this batch right here, and I can't see what's down this way, I'm going to go with the one that I can see over the one that I can't. So we'll fly our ship on over there, and we've got two combats, a village, and a ruins. This is going to give us a bunch of equipment. This has a shop on it. Uh, before we can move on, actually, we... I think we got to take a combat in order to open this up, but I think we can move on as we desire since that's lit up. Let's take an easy combat, and I'm going to try to sort of describe how the game's battle system works because it is a very, very huge integral part of the game, as with most strategy games. All right, so we have a hex-based map right here. The basic way that this works is we have a couple of phases, and you'll get the flow of it. I think it took me about two playthroughs of kind of trying and failing to really get an idea of what they were going for intrinsically enough that I started to face any level of success. But every single tile has elements on it. So, for example, a tile with crystals on it will have kind of like, uh, it'll have colorless energy it'll have kind of soul energy this one over here is only dirt so it has earth energy uh, this one over here has water it has something I don't know what that one is right there it's got water and it's got fire and then we don't have any trees now every single one of our units has an element that is consigned to it we cannot play any of these units until we have destroyed an island that has that element on it so for the sake of you being like a wizard you are destroying this tile and absorbing its energy and just kind of doing the dragon ball z thing we're like Aah! in order to like get the energy elemental wise to summon the thing that you want to summon as of right now we don't really have many options uh, it does snowball so for example these are connected uh, so let's say that we do one earth on the next turn, we can do any tile that has one earth and one something else on it. We can do a tile that has two earth on it. Uh, we can do a tile that has one earth and, like, you know, other stuff on it. You'll, you'll kind of catch the feel of how it goes. With the UI, we have our unit's morale right here. When that gets down to zero, I've never had it get down to zero because it's disabled in the early access right now for testing purposes. So, it doesn't even matter. We have the enemy's command points up here. Command points are used for your grist of the mill unit. Every faction has basically, like, a spam unit that they can put out every single turn. Ours is the fiend. Um... And they also have buildings. So we have a Mana Vault, we have a Cromlex Spire, and we have Imps. And we can use our command points in order to put those out. The enemy has those as well. Every single turn he's getting one command point. This is going to go up to a maximum of two. And then Mana. Mana is unfettered. So your Mana, it maintains in between turns. So if you don't spend your Mana this turn, you can spend twice as much next turn. Uh, in addition, you can increase the amount that it takes up and there's no cap. This just keeps going up. So technically, you can just sit around doing nothing and let your mana build up, except for the fact that every single map has an objective that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, on this one, it's victory points. So for every single turn that we have more units on the board than our opponent does, we will gain a victory point. Likewise for them, if they can get control of the map. Uh, so for right now, we need to destroy an island. I'm going to say to destroy this guy right here. And that will unlock either our Pit Lord, who is attuned to Earth, 
or our tank, which is colorless. I'm going to take the tank for right now because we're going to need the tank. And my idea is that I'm going to take the tank, I'm going to deploy him right there, and then I'm going to take our little fiend and put him right there. We now have two units more than the enemy has on the map, which means that we are, for all intents and purposes, winning this turn. We'll see what they decide to play. I don't know if we're going to score a CP on this turn, but we may. All right, so the turn has ended. They have played a Armadillo Grunt over here, and then they've also played an Armadillo Soldier, and then they've played an Armadillo Blacksmith. You are going to want to take the time to look around and figure out what all these units do. Trust me. Uh, so when you take a look at these units, like the Blacksmith, on Summon and on Death gives a random adjacent allied unit one armor. That's really bad. We do not want that, except that we're a caster army, so it doesn't really matter. But against the Lycans, this would actually be a pretty pretty good ability, because the, Lycan can, the Lycans don't really have any casting abilities. They're just all raw attack, which means they have to go through armor, whereas we don't, because we cast magics. So anyways... This guy right here, he has taunt on him. You can tell by the little ring that's rotating around him. And then this little guy right here has a crushing blow. After attacking, stun the defender for a turn if it is non-legendary and has less armor. Okay, he doesn't have less armor, so we should be okay right there. We need to destroy another island. I'm going to destroy the one that has water on it so that I can get the pit lord. We can also... So we've got our Pit Lord now. We don't have the mana to play our Pit Lord, which is really kind of a shame. I would love to have the mana to play, said Pit Lord. But unfortunately, that's the way life goes. Uh, we're losing right now, so we kind of need to get stuff on the board. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put down an Imp sort of like over here. Just to sort of even out the odds. And then I'm also going to fire a magic spell at that dude. He's got a little fireball ability right here. He can also attack on the same turn that he casts for one damage, but he's going to get smote for two damage back, and that makes me feel kind of nervous. Uh, I'm going to move him over to here real fast. You can either attack or move. I don't Actually, I don't know if you can do both. I'll play around with it as we get further on in. Unfortunately, we're barely holding neutral right now, which is upsetting, but we're setting up for a better turn. Trust me. It'll be okay. Uh, we've got a bunch of mana on this turn, although not necessarily enough to get the thing done that I want to do. There's no trees on this map. There is a fire tile right here so that I can get my arsonist out. Uh, we could put a tiger's eye on him if we wanted to, so that would be pretty cool. And that gives him plus one damage. He's not really going to be dealing melee damage, though, so I think we can save the tiger, Tiger's Eye pretty safely. But I will take my Arsonist over here, and we'll kind of get him into play. I want my Pit Lord to go right here, because he's got a ranged attack. This guy right here is going to shoot a fireball at him. This guy right here is going to shoot a fireball at him. This guy right here is going to attack him? No. Attack him? There we go. Uh, we lost one of our guys, which is really sort of unfortunate. I would have rather not. I guess I don't really need to move the Pit Lord. What I can do ex instead is I can put down a, a mana battery over here so that we're generating four mana a turn instead of three. That'd be kind of nice. We have enough units on the board right now to where I'm feeling fairly confident about my ability to kind of get dudes out of the way. It's important to note that we have not scored, like, a single command point yet, though. So, But we've been sort of biding our time and storing up mana thus far. Uh, what I'd like to do, actually, is destroy that island right there and cut this off so that they can't get to it. Uh, that would be amazing. That would be, like, my favorite thing if I could pull that off. We have seven mana right now. I'm going to need you to throw a fireball at him. I'm going to need you to throw a brick at him. Unfortunately, he's got two armor, and it's physical damage, so it's not going to get through. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need another imp to be, like, right there. And then with the mana that I have remaining, I think that I'd like to put in the Arsonist. The Arsonist is an AoE character, and I think that'll help out a little bit. So for right now, let's just hang tight. We have a two energy advantage. However, they are dealing some damage out here, and they're going to play some cards. So we're still jockeying right now, but I think we're in a good position to actually win. Uh, go ahead and break that right there so that they can't get to my mana battery. That is absolutely, positively perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, we will take a fireball over here, kill him off. We can throw a bomb at him, uh, and that deals adjacent damage to everything around him. I'm going to need to have, let's put that right there for extra spell damage. 
and we'll start building around it next turn. We'll put him right there, and that still leaves us with quite a bit of mana to tool around with. Uh, it's unfortunate because we're dealing with kind of like a unit shortage right now uh, because there was no trees on this map. So I'm missing a unit right now, and you can only have one of all of these units placed except for the fiends. And so, you know, it's just the way she goes, I guess. Uh, if there was trees on this island somewhere, I would feel much better than this. But unfortunately, we've been inflicted by a bad case of treason. Got it. <laughs> Anyways, we got our mana ready to rock. Uh, when these guys die, though, this does mean that we can redeploy them, like, instantly, which is going to be that hot and spicy fire. Uh, you throw out a bomb over here perfect start killing them you move over to here he can't throw his fireball just yet however I think he can throw his little brick thing and kill him off and then you can move not over to there but over to there you can move to there did you throw a fireball already I think he threw a fireball already so he can't move uh, there's our first command point because we maintain the offensive. Do not like what's happening right here. Would really prefer for this not to be a thing. But the good news is we've got them isolated and backed off into a corner, which means we've basically got them on the ropes and we're going to win this. Uh, I will take a free mana for destroying an island. That mana battery right there is just winning this game for us at the moment. It is really quite fantastic. Whoo, the board clear. Don't you just love it? Okay, you go right there, and then I don't really have much else to say. Uh, they're not going to be able to play much. This is pretty much a guaranteed W at this point. We have defeated Armadillos, the Harmadillos, because they're trying to harm us. Uh, so there it is, our final victory point, and we have won. And not every single map has the exact same objective. One thing that I'm really pleased with with this title is that different maps have different objectives. So some maps have like a big beefy boss monster that you've got to kill, and he's summoning things to protect himself. Some of them have like kind of capture the flag elements where you've got to like hold areas. Some of them just need you to maintain control of the board. Like there's different objectives in here, and they're randomly generated, which makes every combat feel kind of fresh, even though you're sort of using the same unit. Units. Uh, so we killed that guy off. That's really, really good. Um, we can get the ruins now, which means that we can explore this for equipment. Uh, we can get Chug Potion when they take damage that would put it below half health. Heal three and lose this ability. We've got Spalders right here, which means that when you attack, you get two armor. That's really, really nice for characters that are trying to do kind of melee offensives. Uh, we've got Practice Dummy over here. It means we can pay a mana to gain attack on any of our units. That's pretty good. It's not bad. I'll probably take the Spalders and put it on the tank so that I can start attacking with them. And then another equipment. We've got Kyanite. We've got Garnet. We've got Emerald. Ooh, I like the Emerald. I could put that on my tank. Ooh, but Garnet is nice too. I'm going to go with the Garnet so that I can melt people's armor. Let's take this little combat over here and kind of see what happens. All right, so this one. We have to kill a boss monster or at least a designated monster. They've got a little skull on them. I don't like the idea of fighting my own faction. That makes me feel kind of nervous. We'll start it off with the tank, I guess. There's not really a bunch of great places for me to put stuff down. I guess I could start from over here. So if I put him right there, that means I can put the mana battery right there. And we can have a little bit of a hotter, spicier beginning, maybe. That seems okay to me. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, I forgot to put the Spalders on him, man. Well, that's going to be a problem with my strategy. Uh, we got to watch out on this one. We're going to be getting bombarded a lot. Uh, really, we want to focus on the fact that the enemy's gate is down, and we just want to hit him with as much damage as we humanly can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the Arsonist right here. Probably should have put a gem on him, but like, eh, whatever. Put the Arsonist right there. Put you right there. Protect the battery. Okay. Pretty good turn. I think we're all right right there. Like, we're going to lose a unit, but he's taking damage, and that's pretty much all that I care about for right now. Oh, no. He does a thing that I'm not familiar with. So deal damage to enemies two units at range at random. Oof, that's not good. If our mana battery goes down, this is going to be a headache. Uh, let's see if maybe I can get an Infurious or I can get a Pit Lord. I think I'm going to go for the Pit Lord. Maybe not. 
I can take the Infurious or I can take the Pit Lord. Let's go with the Pit Lord. Yeah, that seems okay. Like, he's cheap as dirt right now, too, so I can totally live with it. Go ahead and put a little damage off right there. And ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Woof! And so, as you can see, like, some of the matches are very rapid fire, and some of the matches, like the previous one, are kind of drawn out. And you got to sort of, like, think about it. Now, let's go to the marketplace real fast and see if we can pick up anything sexy. So, we've got equipment. Not only can you put gems on guys when you summon them to give them a little bit of extra oomph to get them over the hill, but on top of that, you can also put gear on each of your units uh, that will do various things. Uh, so, we've got a helmet right here. Eh, it, gives you eight, or it gives you attack whenever somebody dies. We've got a quill, so attacked units do not retaliate if they die. Uh, we've got calculated plans over here when someone gains two armor until its next turn. It's not too bad. Uh, we've got minion equipment over here, so when attacking a minion, gain one attack. Okay. We can go with shoulder pads to give them some more HP. I like that idea. I think I'll take the shoulder pads for the minions. Inside of our army right here, we can put that on our little fiends. So that's perfect. And then you can also modify your buildings and stuff too. But our fiends now have 4 HP, which actually makes them quite a bit more useful. And then, of course, we'll put the armor on the tank so that he becomes kind of, like, indestructible. At least that's where I would prefer to have him at. Uh, it looks like... I don't know if the gems get used up. I haven't really been paying attention to it. Honestly, with games like these, sometimes they can be a lot to take in all at once. Like, because I play it, like, a little bit to kind of get familiar with the mechanics. But I'd also like to be able to have some level of kind of first impressions while I do these videos for you, too. Uh, there's a champion beast over here. All right. Well, let's go for the champion. What's the worst that can happen? Like, we lose? You know, a cyclops look at his one eye. So we've got to kill him. All right. Uh, first things first, we'll go ahead and take that. That's going to give us access to the tank. The tank is extra spicy right now, so we'll put him down right there. He should have, like, mad armor as far as I know. Shouldn't he? Oh, when attacking, he gains armor. I totally forgot about that. All right, well, that's fine. That'll make him tougher for the next turn. We'll put you down right there. And I don't like being backed into a corner like this where I can't wheel and deal, but I know what this guy does. He summons little worms that don't really attack. They just sit around and spam heals on him. So this might be a little bit of a long-winded fight. Fair warning. Uh, this fight might have to take a little bit more effort. Oh, yeah, he gets a double attack, too. I totally forgot about the double attack. All right, so with where we are... I would like to get my Infurious on the board. I think I would like that a lot. I would also like to get my Pit Lord on the board. It appears as though I can't put that on the Pit Lord. I wonder why. Huh. All right. Well, like, fair enough. I'll take the Infurious then since I can buff him up a little bit and I wanted to see if I lose that gem after I get it. I'm going to put you like right here so that you can attack. I'm going to put you right there so we're starting to get like a numerical advantage. You've got three damage, so I think this will be okay. He's only going to get one attack. That'll give a little retaliate right there. We want to bombard him with fireballs as much as possible. If we have to kill that little worm right there in order to make sure that it doesn't Oh, for whatever reason, I thought you could cast a fireball and also attack at the same time, but the little action meter ran out, I suppose. I must have had, like, a building or, like, a mod that gave one of my minions an extra action, and I took that to mean he could attack and move. But I just wasn't paying attention good enough. You, know, you guys know that I'm afflicted by that from time to time, the old not paying attention. Not great, but we're still in it. Uh, we need to put a tank down on this turn so that he can only attack the tank on that side. Uh, unless we do that, we're going to have a really, really hard time. I think there's fire over here. I would like to get an arsonist. That would be great. Yeah, let's throw some fireballs around, shall we? And then in order to keep him from attacking people that he's not supposed to... I'm going to place that over there, and he can take his chances. I think he only has these worms over here, so, like, I'm not entirely too worried. He's got taunt, so I can really only attack him. Uh, well, 
leave it for right now in the hopes that he tries to double swack him. And he did. Good. That saved my imps. My imps are going to be the principal damage dealers here, so I'm okay with him killing the tank. Alright, so from where we're at, I need adjacencies to get spell damage too, so that they deal three damage with their attack instead of two. We've got a limited time to kill this guy off, so I'm trying to plan it out now. Uh, I haven't picked up my Pit Lord yet, so I think obviously that's an option. So we'll pick up the Pit Lord right there while isolating our mana battery, so that they have no way of getting to it. We have enough mana. Put you right there. Put you right there. Do three damage right there. He can't use his ability till next turn. Pretty good chance this little guy is going to get slumped right here. And if they both use their healing ability on him, we're basically resetting back to default. But we've got our AoE on the board now, so if he can survive for one turn, we can start throwing fireballs over here, and it AoEs everything around him, so it should kill off the worms. Because he really only summons them, like, adjacent. Yeah. Kind of an issue. Kind of a problem. Not like a massively upsetting problem, but if he gets over to this too, we've got another issue coming. Uh, let me, I'm going to knock that out, get an extra mana. And what I'd like to see, first things first is I need another imp. I'm going to throw that out to there. And we need to start surround and pounding this guy. So I'm going to put a tank in. I'm going to put an Infurious in. Like, they're probably going to get riggedy wrecked. But we got to do what we got to do out here. He can only attack the tank now, so... Both of his attacks should go to the tank, and then on the next turn we should have him, like... Deuces ready to die, basically. Yeah, we're good. Uh, I don't even need to, like, pay attention to this turn. So what I need is for you to attack right there, and then I need you to throw a fireball right there, and then you to throw a fireball right there, and bim, bam, bomb. We got ourselves a victory. I like this game a lot. I think it's pretty cool. Like, I think it's got a unique idea going, and you can see the influences inside the context of the game. I appreciate the fact that it's not a card game. Okay, so now that we're coming in on the end, I, I like that the game is trying to do its own thing and march to its own tune. You can see the influences there, but none of the influences are strong enough to really relegate this game to being sort of derivative. I think they're onto a good mishmash of ideas. Uh, we've leveled up, so we do have skill points available. Each one of the leaders has a talent tree that will do various things. So, like, right here we can start with extra mana. Right here we can use a magic spell to give one of our units extra spell power. Uh, our grants our minions just a permanent plus one spell power, which is pretty cool. And, and so there's lots of stuff to play around with over here. At the moment, I think that's, like, the only one that we can take. So I figured I'd probably save my points until we get something bigger and more substantial. Inside the options menu, we can take a look at that, too. Options menu you, you know, they let you rebind what limited keys that there actively are inside the course of the game, and then, you know, there's a couple of graphic settings just in case you're playing on a potato. You can go with the various windowed settings too, and it looks like they've got actually an interesting split. Uh, the volume mixer is not what I expected. You can actually get the gameplay noises separated from the interface noises, so that's kind of nice just in case, like, clicking and stuff like that is triggering for you. But yeah, the game is called Quintera. And I think it's pretty cool. You can definitely see where it's pulling its ideas from, but it manages to conjoin them in a way that isn't necessarily... You know, that doesn't make the game clearly sourced from any other place. Like, you can see the little bits and pieces there. It's got the items from auto battlers. It's got level up systems from an RPG. It's got the strategy combat of, like, a hex-based strategy game. It's got the minion summoning of, like, monster train, the augmentability of your minions. Like, it's kind of a cool idea. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it, and I'll see y'all tomorrow for something hot and fresh off the Indie Skillet. Bye!